So, hello, uh, I think we can start. Uh, welcome to this uh, session. First presentation is the State of John Note, presented by Alessio Fabiani and uh, Francesco Barton. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, uh, and good evening. Good afternoon, and thanks for attending the state of Geonode. Do, do you hear me? <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm going to talk uh, and give you a quick overview of the current state of Geonode, where we uh, started. Um, I'm Francesco Bartoli, and I work for GeoBeyond, and this is my colleague uh, Alessio Fabiani. Uh, who works for GeoSolution. There is also Simone Dalmasso from the GRC, which uh, who unfortunately is not here this year. Um, so, GeoNode, quick overview of GeoNode. Uh, so, what, what, what is GeoNode? GeoNode is a web framework. Uh, it is developed uh, in Django. Um, it has uh, several core components. Uh, and basically, um, you can use Juno to upload data, geospatial data, to describe the metadata for uh, spatial data, and to share uh, your data on the on the web. Um, and usually, it is well known as uh, a geospatial content management system. Uh, among the components, there are. Uh, a spatial database like uh, PostGIS. Um, the main uh, core component for uh, mm, for uh, uh, distributing and uh, serving services, web services, uh, the common uh, services from OGC, uh, is GeoServer. And at certain point, there is also uh, the possibility to use uh, QG Server as a, a backend. And for the metadata, there is PySDSW and GeoNetwork. And while the new viewer that uh, we, we, we will talk later about the new viewer, but uh, currently the version 2.10 is based on Map Store, a new viewer based on open layers, leaflet, and um, React. So as uh, I mentioned, you can upload geospatial data set, you can manage uh, for each data set, and for each uh, metadata you can manage the permissions. So there is uh, a very uh, complex um, set of uh, uh, permission for users based on user, based on groups. Uh, very uh, complex and fine-grained uh, capabilities to uh, define the access and the editing of each data set. You can obviously create uh, your own maps, and the maps are uh, can be shared on the on the web. Um, and obviously, through the use of GeoServer, you can. Uh, le le exploit and leverage OGC standard like WMS, WFS, uh, the transactional uh, option of the feature, and the coverage and the metadata with CSW. Uh, just a quick overview of the history. It started on uh, 2010 with the uh, 1.0 uh, release. And then he go through uh, several years years of development to uh, the current year, and the first uh, the first version of Geonode was just for sharing data, for sharing, for example, a shape file. While uh, we ended ended up uh, currently with the possibility, for example, to deploy with sophisticated. Uh, cloud-based mechanism like uh, Docker and Docker Compose. We usually uh, have uh, Code Sprint and Summit. Uh, the last one has been um, uh, happened in uh, Viareggio uh, this June. 
and uh, yeah, probably we will have a next one uh, uh, the next year. Uh, the community uh, has been grown significantly, and there are a lot of organizations which are using Geonode. Among them, uh, there are a lot of uh, UN organizations like uh, WFP, and also, for example, the JRC, uh, till uh, 2018, was using uh, Geonode for uh, sharing uh, their data. So again, there are a huge community behind the, um, the Geonode project. Uh, we have uh, an official uh, project steering committee, and more or less we have uh, 20 active core committers, uh, 500 members on the user list, and among uh, uh, them there is also uh, 120 members on the developer. Uh, list. So this is just uh, a list of the organization and company behind the software. And just a quick overview, uh, a visualization of the, uh, the languages which uh, Geonode is based on, the issue opened on GitHub, how many fork, uh, the organization and the project uh, uh, S and yeah the stars as well. Okay, let's continue with. Okay, <coughs> real quick, let's let's see uh, what's new in uh, in Journal 2.10, which is the latest stable release. Uh, first of all, the uh, release process. Basically, you are here. We released the journal 2.10 uh, at the end, more or less at the end of June. We plan to release journal the 2.10.1 uh, in September, which fixes uh, an amount of, <coughs> of issues. And uh, uh, possibly we will start the development of journal 3 based on Python 3 and Django 2 uh, as soon as possible, <laughs> possibly before the, the end of the next year, of this year, sorry. Uh, are you using an old version? Please upgrade, because uh, because the new version uh, contains a lot of bug fixes, especially security fixes. Uh, it's uh, much more stable, uh, <coughs> and it is based also on the new version of your server, which again contains a lot of uh, bug fixes. Uh <coughs> so for your safety uh, and for the stability of the uh, of your production server, please consider upgrading your node also. Uh, the GIS clients uh, have been, uh, let's say, upgraded. So the new one has a lot of more functionalities. Uh, it's responsive, so it can be used uh, uh, on a mobile uh, device. Uh, and also, uh, overall, the architecture is much more uh, stable and, uh, uh, and, re and reliable. Uh, okay, what's all? all Again, what you will get with the update to Geno 2.10. Important security fixes, uh, upgrade the upgraded version community modules on your server, so you will have uh, an, update, an upgraded backup and restore module, uh, how out to authentication with your server, uh, upgraded geofence for the security rules, uh, granular security rules with, with your server, and updated geo web cache. Uh, more support uh, for the compatibility uh, for the SLD exported through QGIS, especially the raster one. Uh, for the vector vectorial one, we still have few issues. Uh, maybe the simple one works, the most complex one don't. Uh, ready to support your server 2.15. To be honest, the new version of Geonode, the, the one that will be come in September, will already support your server 2.15.2. Do. New functionalities, improved remote service. Uh, basically, uh, Geonode allows you to connect different and remote instances of Geonodes other than standard WMS services. So you can uh, not only upload your data sets into, into your local server, but you can uh, link uh, other layer, layers available through the WMS protocol or directly through another instance of your node. 
In that case, Geonode will try to import also all the metadata associated with the layer. So you will have uh, more or less an exact copy of the layer of the remote layer. Not the data. Geonode won't import the original data, but will uh, link you to the remote layer, and you can use the remote layer as a standard layer for your maps. Uh, support for temporal time series. Uh, you can upload now vectorial files, which contains a temporal dimension. And with the new client, uh, you will be able to have a, a nice uh, time uh, slider that allows you also to run some animations. Uh, improvements to uploaders and data formats. You, with the new just server importer, you can upload more data formats like CSV, KML, KMZ, GeoJSON. Uh, improved uh, support for SLD. Um, support for metadata edit. You can also edit metadata in batch mode. So you don't need to edit uh, uh, each resource one by one, basically. Uh, few capabilities, simple capabilities of customization without uh, struggling with the Django template. So you can now uh, create some customization both for the menu and also for the overall team directly through the admin dashboard. So you can change, let's say, the, inter the interface quite significantly. Uh, you will have for free also a privacy statement that you can add to your portal. Um, um, the capability to connect a social login also, thanks to the OAuth 2 protocol. Um, yeah, I don't know how, my, how much time remains. Uh, advanced data workflow uh, allows basically managers to validate your data sets before they becoming public and accessible to everyone. So you can enable uh, this validation work workflow that allows uh, groups of members to inspect the data and metadata before uh, behind accepted by a manager or an administrator. Uh, integrated monitoring, which will uh, be also um, uh, more improved uh, directly inside the framework, so you can have an idea uh, on how much uh, your server uh, is consuming in terms of resources, and also uh, what, which are the most accessible resources and in the next version, you will have also an idea uh, of uh, uh, what mem user members are doing, basically, uh, how time they will stay on a page, which URLs are they hitting, and so on. A sort of analytics, a simple version of the analytics. Uh, completely review uh, client took set. So you can basically create your clients, implement few templates and few methods, and just plug in your client, your GIS client into your node very easily. Uh, new uh, GIS integrated uh, client, uh, Mapstore 2, uh, which, as Francesco said before, is based on React uh, and Open Layers and Leaflet. Uh, you can decide which one. It supports even Cesium if you want. <coughs> but among the improvements, there is the possibility of creating widgets and also an integrated style editor that allows you now to support also CSS other than SLD. Uh, as a plugin, there is a possibility also to plug uh, the Harvard World Map client. And uh, well, Geofence, Rule, and uh, Optimization, Docker improvements for the setup of Geonode. So I, as I mentioned before, uh, now, currently, there is the capabilities to install uh, Geonode with two different methods based on uh, Docker. One is the common, uh, well, uh, common known uh, uh, regular Docker, and the other one is the SPC Geonode. Uh, you can find the script to run the installation in the repository. Um, what you can expect to come, uh, it is in the roadmap to uh, also support Kubernetes. 
the security and uh, hardening part, uh, the middleware on Django has been significantly improved and at the moment uh, you can control uh, the session, the course, okay, uh, skip, and the OTU token. Uh, yeah, no, that, that, that is important. Yeah, yeah this, this, this is a, a nice feature that we have also with the new version. Uh, it's basically an internal proxy that allows you to uh, use uh, GeoNode users without creating a copy of the users into your server so that you can use as an instance uh, all the authentication systems supported by GeoNodes directly from external clients. So as an instance you can use basic authentication from your QJS client or something. So fixed improvement in from the 2.6, the thumbnail generation, uh, B-box uh, coordinates, uh, what else? The error on metadata editor and the upload functionality. Uh, also the GeoNode comp country maps uh, has been separated from the uh, the um, uh, normal uh, uh, standard core and that hasn't, be, hasn't been uh, um, put into a separated repository on GitHub. And you can just install with PIP install the, the, the app that you need. So among them there are uh, several uh, country apps that uh, the metadata XL, XLS editor and the coverage of the code has been significantly improved from the 2.6 and there is also uh, the new documentation that uh, has been uh, improved and has been uh, refactored. Now it is uh, possible to go through uh, the documentation and follow easily the step for the installation or the, just the step in different uh, uh, portion of the uh, section uh, for just for the user. So you can, uh, administrator can go into the uh, right section while uh, the user uh, in the others. <clears throat> yeah, uh, as uh, a user, if you are not a developer, uh, you have uh, a res big responsibility on an open source project, so please participate, uh, register to the user list, and also if you can, uh, help us to answer questions and help people to install or configure your node or use your node. Um, feel free to open issues if you find any issue, feel free to propose uh, a new feature that you would like to be uh, improved uh, or integrated into your node. Uh, also, the GitHub issues have been uh, improved, so you have templates where you can basically decide if you want to create an issue uh, other than uh, a feature request, other than an improvement proposal. Uh, steps to, to get in touch with the developer. First of all, try the mailing lists. Uh, we will try to inspect the problem as much as we can. If we identify a real issue, then we will go through the uh, standard proce procedure, basically, by opening an issue and then creating a pull request to fix the issue. Uh, in case you stumble into a vulnerability, please uh, try to avoid to, uh, to tell this in public email. Try to avoid mailing lists or repositories where an history can be uh, inspected by malicious uh, people. So uh, contact directly the PSC members and be prepared to collaborate with us uh, in order to try to identify the vulner vulnerability issue. Thanks to everyone. Thanks, <clears throat> so thank you for your presentation. And now we have uh, five minutes for uh, questions. Uh, <coughs> hello, uh, it's, um, I've checked um, 
Years ago, it was possible to switch uh, Geo server by uh, QGIS server. Is uh, it's been something uh, community will uh, reconsider to to give the ability to to switch? Uh, yeah, yes, it was Cartusa. <laughs> Cartusa work, but it's 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 not updated anymore. Uh, we have some pending updates coming for it. Okay. We didn't switch to Kisa Server Three yet, which we also yeah. want to do at some point. I'll but tell you exactly it's it's still active. It's not a, a dead project, or uh, I think no. I mean, we didn't uh, submit all our updates. I think we need some. We have some changes up that we have to upstream. The work is quite complicated to integrate mm. for us. And because because that it, now uh, it's uh, uh, it, it is uh, uh, composed of uh, several Docker containers, so perhaps switch uh, compo a component, it, it will be easier. I, I don't know. Uh, there are Cartosa Docker containers that allow you yeah. to basically use the QGIS container. Many thanks for improvements uh, in, uh, in Lattice Dish. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, great to see all these uh, nice developments. Um, until now, uh, it is. Uh, GeoTIFF and Shapefile that are supported mostly for uh, uploading data. Are there plans to uh, to have GeoPackage supported? It's <laughs> a good question. Basically, we haven't yet uh, found the uh, fundings for that. <laughs> and uh, to be honest, uh, GeoServer already support them. Uh, GeoServer support also vectorial tiles, so wouldn't be that much difficult to support them. But uh, we also didn't have really requests, direct requests on your node. If you, if you look at the GitHub issues, there is no one uh, requesting for GeoPackage. So if you would like, open one. <laughs> and maybe we can find some development resources to, to integrate them. Um. I'm a very new user to GeoNode. In fact, I was introduced to it during the workshop. Um, I don't know why. Is there, is there a specific reason why it's very, very difficult to to set it up on Windows? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it's Windows. <laughs> uh, the the biggest difficult to set up in Windows are the GDAL bindings, uh, which usually it's a mess basically, because uh, you need to find uh, uh, your internal building, uh, then you need to bind them with Python GDAL library and native libraries, so it's not something that it is really easy to do automatically. It would be possible, but it requires a lot of re development resources that we are currently don't have. Moreover, a lot of dependencies in your node requires native uh, libraries, uh, so most of the time, especially Shapely and the ge geometric ones, uh, every time you try to install the directory through Python, uh, basically uh, you get stopped by Windows because you don't have a compiler or you don't have the, the libraries and so on. So you have to go around in internet, find a, a compiled version of the library and install that one. So yeah, and in certain limits, uh, it's possible, of course, but it requires so much resources to develop that uh, w we don't have uh, people available to, 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 to do that, basically. But, yeah, at certain point, you can use Docker, even if uh, we encountered uh, in Windows some problem in the past. So, better is Linux <laughs> at all. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure if it's if the answer will be short. Uh, if uh, I'm going to you to edit metadata on a layer, 
uh, what do I have to expect? Uh, do I have to um, what the, the user interface do, does uh, present it to me? Is it the geo network at the end? Uh, so by default, uh, GeoNode uses Py CSW. So you will have, in any case, a CSW protocol, ISO compliant. Moreover, we upgraded to the latest uh, version of Py CSW, so you have that. Yeah, through the settings, you can also use uh, a GeoNetwork instance if you want. Of course, uh, it will publish only the metadata available into GeoNode which are the ISO 100, 115 schema, uh, limited schema. So if you have your own schema, uh, you, yeah, you, you have to edit manually on, on your network. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Let's give a round of applause for uh, Alessio and Francesco.